you say somebody else was No, where does he say himself? Talking. No, that's one thing, but not only that. It doesn't say that you are God. It says that you're my son, right? And we already have established that when when there's a reference to a son in the in the biblical discourse, in the Bible, that could mean a, a peacemaker, a good person or anything. It doesn't necessarily mean physical son. So does it make sense to you if I said to you, look, if I said to you, look, it makes sense. All of the prophets came with one message. So people like Abraham and Moses and all of these prophets, they came with the message that there's only one God worthy of worship. Yeah? Abraham never mentioned the Trinity. Moses never mentioned the Trinity. Noah never mentioned the Trinity. None of these people mentioned that Jesus is God. None of these people in the Old Testament mentioned that the Holy Spirit is God. Well, but if you're talking about so many prophets, do you have any clue how many prophecies have been fulfilled by Jesus? And are you good at mathematics? Am I good at it? Yeah? Not that good, no. Uh, okay. Uh, th th then this might be not, not, the, not a good approach in this con conversation. But no, but look, but I mean, I, I'm not saying that because this is the difference between Muslims and Jewish people. Yeah, We agree here again because you're saying that there were prophecies <coughs> that were predicting the, the coming of the Messiah. We say, fine, no problem. We accept that as well. He must, there must have been such prophecies. Why? Because if... After Moses, we believe that Jesus was the, in fact the Messiah. We're not Jewish people who, for example, reject the Messiah. We say, no, he's a true Messiah. But what we're asking for is very specific. Did he ever say that he was God? Because if you look at the book of, for example, easy, easy references, yeah? In the book of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30, he says that I have not come, I don't submit myself to my own will, I submit myself to the Father's will. So here, someone who submits himself to, his, to the Father's will, God's will, in an Arabic sense, is called a Muslim. Why? A Muslim is someone who submits his will to God. We believe that all the prophets from that perspective, yeah, from that linguistic perspective, were Muslims. So Abraham and Moses and so, Noah. So you say when Jesus was praying to God, this is a sign for you that he cannot be God. Or you, you would say if somebody is praying, he cannot be God. Yeah, I mean, he says in the Bible, okay, so uh, then, the Father is greater than I. Okay, and then what, what do you say if Allah is praying at any point in the Quran? He, he, never, he never does. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Allah is praying. Yeah, praying, yeah, he doesn't. Allah is, is just the Arabic word for God. Yeah, yeah he knows that. So okay. how is God praying to who? Th th that would be my question for you. Yeah, but it doesn't say there's anything like this in the Quran. There is nothing. Okay. Well, I, I, I have to um, find out where it was. Um, Maybe what you're referring to um, is in chapter 33. Well, I had a discussion with someone else about this before. Where it says, In Allah, Malaikatuhu, Yusalluna ala nabis. This verse, in that Allah and His angels send blessings on the messenger. Ah, okay. so just Now, the word, yeah, blessings. So it says, Asallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. So here, it says, so you guys send blessings upon the Prophet. Now the word sal, salli, salli you sallu, this, this, this verse, this word here, some people might get confused and think, because it means prayer in one way. Okay. Some are, okay, we're praying to him. No, God doesn't pray to the Prophet Muhammad. We believe that this is in context of that verse. It's talking about sending blessings. So God sends blessings to the Prophet. He never prays to him. That's why as Muslims, we believe that Allah is one. He's the all-knowing, all-hearing, all-magnificent. And that he sends prophets of full time. People like Prophet Noah and Moses and Abraham, we believe in them. All of them had the message, which is to believe in one God and to worship one God. Jesus came with exactly the same message. So we believe that Jesus didn't come with anything new. He didn't change, the, he didn't reinvent the wheel. The Trinity is a new concept which was introduced by the Roman Empire, we believe. It's not something which was necessarily either biblical, number one, or preached by Jesus at all, number two. So we say that, doesn't it make sense to follow what Jesus Christ himself said for us to follow, which is to believe in the one God and to worship in him, just like Jesus did. Didn't Jesus somewhere say that we shall follow him? Yeah, we follow him. A Christian, by definition, is someone who follows Jesus, yeah? He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay, we believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah, see, so... Wait, wait. So you say Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, but you say that he's at the same time not God. Yeah. What's how, the, how do you bring these things together? How does it... The way means someone you follow, yeah? The truth, it means someone who speaks the truth. And the life, it brings, you, brings life to you. So in other words, if you follow his teachings, you will be... You'd have life given to you. You'd be like a newborn baby. Now what were his teachings? 
His teachings were to believe in one God, to worship one God, just like all the other prophets that came before him. There's no difference in between his teachings and Moses' teachings. That's why he says in Matthew, I have not come to abolish the law or the prophets, I have come to affirm them. <laughs> right? So we say that there was no difference. That all of these mighty prophets and messengers came to, to worship God and that Jesus did nothing but the same thing. And But the only difference is this. You'll find that Jesus Christ, yeah, he was sent to his people in his time. That's why he said, do not go in the way of the Gentiles, because I was only sent the, uh, to the lost sheep of Israel. Whereas we believe that the final prophet Muhammad, he was not only mentioned in the Bible, as someone who's going to come in the future, but he was also said that he was going to, uh, that he's also sent for all of humanity. And that's why it says in the Quran, uh, that we have sent you kafatan lil nasi walakin aksara nasi la ya'lam that we have sent you for all of humankind but the majority of humankind don't know in other words whereas all the other prophets were sent for their dis uh, for their province their people at their time the prophet muhammad was sent for all of humanity do you see what i mean now if you look at the book of isaiah chapter 42 of the book of isaiah you'll come to realize that actually the uh, prophet muhammad is mentioned in that book he said, it says in that book that there were people, there's going to be a prophet that's going to be sent to the Arabs, to the people of Kedar. Now, the people of Kedar, by the biblical standard, according to the exegetes of the Bible, are the Arab people. We're saying that who was sent as a prophet to the Arabs? Jesus. But he wasn't sent to the Kedar, uh, Kedarites. He was only sent to the people of Israel, right? Not the Kedar people. And didn't Jesus at any point move towards no. Kedar or was if you look at, If you look at the book of Ezekiel, in, in somewhere like chapter 32, verse 39, something like this, yeah? It's very clearly this, uh, noted there that uh, uh, Abraham had two sons, uh, two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. Ishmael, he settled, he settled in uh, that area. Uh, okay. So I, uh, Ishmael was the father, the figurative father of the Arabs. So from him the Arabs came. We say that so he, he stayed in Kedar and not only is that the case but the Bible goes into more detail. It said that the people will be shouting on the mountains of Salah. Salah could either be interpreted as one of two things. Either Mecca or Medina. Why? Because we have now Salah is, a, is actually a mountain range in Medina which is exactly the city where the Prophet Muhammad lived. So this is we saying is ample evidence from the Bible that Prophet Muhammad is predicted as a final prophet that's going to come and, and release the people from the shackles of wherever it was that they were. What is the most important thing for you in Islam? It's believing in one God and worshiping one God. Okay. Do you see what I mean? To be honest with you, in the Quran, once again, if you look at if you look at chapter five, verse seventy-two, and up to like verse eighty, yeah. You'll find that there's an interesting discourse here about Jesus. And it says, he, they used to eat food. I mean, they were human, mortal creatures. Yeah? And then it says at the end of, the, of that verse, uh, Look at how we make the signs very clear for them, and look how then they will turn away. So I hope today, what's your name again, my friend? So, Leonard. Len Leonard. Leonard. Leonard, yeah? Today, what was your name? Uh, Muhammad, Muhammad. Muhammad. I hope today, since the signs now have come and the, and the evidence has been established on you today, what's going to happen? I hope that you have at least go home, back to Germany and open up the Bible. But he said the evidence, sorry, he said the evidence wasn't things. So what part was it that was unclear? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, what is um, your disagreement with what this brother has just said? Maybe my problem is that, that I don't have any reverences for anything. So for example, you were asking if Jesus ever claimed to be God or Son of God. I cannot imagine that Jesus did not, but I don't have any evidences on me right now. So That's fine. Alright then, in that case what we can do is I can say to you, look, it was, it was a pleasure meeting you. I think the next step for us both is for us to both enlighten our uh, scope of knowledge. You can look into the Quran, read it. And just just for the sake of knowledge base, and uh, maybe one day you can meet meet each other again, yeah. And we'll talk about it. I hear more often. Muslims in Norway are now establishing a masjid and dawah center to enhance the Norwegian dawah. If you donate to this cause, you will, inshallah, reap the rewards of thousands of Muslims coming back to Islam, and many of those will become du'at and invite to Islam. So click the link and donate now and share the video for extra rewards.